Welcome back. Um, sunny California is on board. So, um, oh, we had a great time in Georgia this weekend. The weather was phenomenal. Great turnout at the Rescue Dog Games. We had a lot of fun with the folks from All Provide. They were cooking food all day long, and it just smells so good. And it is a raw food, and people asked us, why are you cooking it if it's a raw food? And uh, Dennis Becker has, uh, he's, he's really smart. He started doing these events and he cooks this, uh, sautés it in a, in a pan on a little burner. And the smell is so good, it attracts everybody. So everybody comes over to see what we're doing. And then he hands out uh, samples to all the dogs that go by, which is great because what dog does not like human grade cooked food? Um, and so they all just snarfed it down. Even the even the nervous Nellies who were like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, if we got them out of the crowd and let them kind of, you know, get away from the distractions, everybody ate really well. So so we got to prove to people, a lot of people, that um, whole food is really what our pets should be eating. And, you know, a lot of these spooky drugs that we're talking about, if our pets were fed correctly and not over medicated and not over vaccinated, we really would not use or or need these drugs very much. Um, oh, okay, that got on hit. All right. So today we are talking about cyclosporin or atopica. Um, oh, before I get started, let me just give you one more reminder. Sign up for the Pet Nutrition Summit, uh, Dog Nutrition Summit. Uh, I think Gwen just posted the link on there. Um, it's coming up very quickly, only a couple of weeks away, less than a couple of weeks away. So uh, we want to make sure that you get all the nutrition information that you need uh, from some really, really top experts. So that's going to be amazing. So atopica, this is an immune suppressant. So I put in the description, it's used for treating allergies, IBD, dry eye, autoimmune disease. In people, it's used for people who have had organ transplants. It's also used for rheumatoid arthritis or uh, psoriasis. So a lot of autoimmune diseases. Um, one of my holistic vet friends said she had to go to the dermatologist because she thought she was getting um, a little bit of eczema. And this was the first thing they said they wanted to put her on. And she's like, are you kidding me? There is no way. Um, so uh, thank you. I guess that's Gwen that's posting. We've got incurable canine atopic dermatitis, the allergy blog. We've got autoimmune disease blog. Uh, these links are in the comments so that you can um, get more information on how to help your pet get over these problems that we see. Yeah, and we want, to, you know, the problem with something like cyclosporin, this is a lot like what we talked about with the Apoquel on Friday, is that it's treating symptoms. It is not curing anything. We are not healing the body. All we're doing is suppressing everything. So, uh, side effects, I'm going to give you the quick rundown, and then we're going to go through bit by bit, just like we did with the Apoquel. Vomiting, diarrhea, and loss of appetite, which can lead to weight loss. Very, very common with this drug. Almost, uh, well, it's a very high percentage. We'll get into the percentages, but very high percentage will have vomiting and diarrhea. And usually the answer you're given is just, um, just uh, stick with it. Just ride it out for the vomiting and diarrhea. It'll get better. A lot of them just learn, learn to deal with it better, and so it gets under control. Um, but, you know, again, if we have to take other drugs to get rid of the side effects of this drug, maybe we should just get rid of this drug. Um, anaphylactic reactions and shock, so they can actually have uh, an, an allergic reaction to the drug that is supposed to stop allergies. Um, liver failure, bone marrow suppression, and kidney disease. In humans, kidney disease is a big issue with this drug. Seizures and tremors. Um, it does cause neurologic problems, and uh, it's actually fairly common. Definitely immune suppression. So just like we talked about on Friday, you're going to get super infections. You're going to get poor wound healing. You're going to get viral papillomas. You're going to get outbreaks of demodex. Um and the big thing is, because we're suppressing the immune system, we'll talk about it in a little more depth, cancer, it is a known carcinogen. It is unsafe for dogs under six months old. OK, 
kind of like we talked about on Friday, their immune system is pretty naive. It's not well formed. And so they're going to be more prone to super infections and dying. Uh, should not be used on dogs who already have an infection. Well, how many dogs with allergies have skin infections? And then we put them on a super immune suppressant and then it gets worse. Uh, should not be used in dogs who have a pre-existing or have had cancer. So all those dogs with um, mast cell, lymphoma, whatever, uh, and it will cause cancer, by the way, um, should not be used in animals with kidney disease. So you need to be monitoring and you need to check before you start the drug. Should not be used on pregnant or breeding dogs and modified live vaccines should not be given. So that's your distemper, hepatitis, um, parainfluenza, parvo should not be given while your dog is on atopica. Um, and we do know that we see cancers related to this particular drug. So, um, and uh, this drug is made from a fungus. It's actually a mycotoxin. We have a blog on the bad mycotoxins like aflatoxins, um, fum fuminensin, uh, those sort of things. But penicillin is actually a mycotoxin. It's made from a fungus as well, made from a mold. Um, so that's where this drug comes from. That's how it's made. Um, so atopica is an oral form of cyclosporin. There are um, generics out now as well. There's cyclosporin eye drops as well. It is an immune modulating agent and it's produced as a metabolite of a fungus. Um, indicated for the control of atopic dermatitis in dogs weighing at least four pounds. So should not be used in the little tiny kids. And this is from the drug insert. So they're saying it should be used for atopic dermatitis, which is allergic skin disease, allergic skin inflammation. It is not labeled for IBD. It is not labeled for autoimmune disease. That's off-label usage. Um, so the initial dose is given as a single daily dose for 30 days, and then it should be tapered by decreasing the frequency of dosing to every other day or twice a week until you reach the minimum that will achieve the desired therapeutic effect. Unfortunately, sometimes it doesn't work at all, so we just keep upping the doses instead of trying to get the doses uh, down. It should not be given more frequently than once a day, um, and I have seen it used much more than that. I've also seen this used for um, anal fistulas. I don't use it for that, but I have seen it used for anal fistulas. Uh, it should be given at least one hour before or two hours after a meal, so if you haven't been told that, there's how it's supposed to be dosed. Um, okay. It is contraindicated in dogs with a history of cancer. It is, uh, contraindicated in dogs who have a hypersensitivity to cyclosporin. How would you know until you give it and they have an anaphylactic reaction? Um, it is a systemic immunosuppressant that may increase the susceptibility to infection and the development of cancer. That is a warning on the label. Um, for use only in dogs, which is kind of funny because they do use cyclosporin in people. This is for on the atopica. Capsules should not be broken or opened. You should wear gloves during administration, wash hands after administration, and in case of accidental ingestion, seek medical advice immediately. Because, oh yeah, lots of kidney problems for people. Um, safety and effectiveness has not been established in dogs less than six months or less than four pounds or those used for breeding, pregnant or lactating dogs. Um, with any immune modulation regimen, exacerbation of subclinical cancers and infections, infectious conditions may occur. Gastrointestinal problems and gingival hyperplasia, swelling of the gums, um, may occur at the initial recommended dose. So these are side effects that we see a lot and very early on, even at the recommended doses. It can cause elevated levels of blood sugar, so should not be used in diabetic dogs. So they have on here, use in caution, with caution in cases of diabetes. How about we just don't use it in diabetics because we know it's gonna raise their blood sugar and make it harder to regulate them. Um, if signs of diabetes develop, then you should uh, discontinue the drug. Um, should be used with caution with drugs that affect the P450 enzyme system because this drug is metabolized by the liver. We're gonna talk about other drugs that it has interactions with. Uh, should be used with caution in dogs with kidney insufficiency, or how about not at all? Um, there have been reports of seizures in human, adult, and pediatric patients receiving cyclosporin, particularly in combination with steroids. 
Um, and you should only give killed vaccines, not modified live vaccines. So a killed rabies vaccine technically could be given. Um, so in their initial field study, they had 256 dogs. 14 dogs withdrew from the study due to adverse reactions. Uh, four withdrew from, from vomiting. One withdrew because of diarrhea. One withdrew from vomiting, diarrhea, and itching, the thing we're trying to stop. One withdrew for vomiting, depression, and lethargy. One withdrew for lethargy, not eating, and hepatitis, liver inflammation. One withdrew because of gum swelling, lethargy, increased thirst and urination, and soft stool. One withdrew because of seizures. One withdrew because of it developed a sebaceous cyst. One developed because of the itching was worse. One developed uh, redness over the entire body and withdrew. And um, one withdrew because of a super ear infection. Vomiting and diarrhea were the most common adverse reactions. Um, persistent ear infections, urinary tract infections, lack of appetite, gingival swelling or gum hyperplasia, lymphadenopathy, so swollen lymph nodes and lethargy were the next most frequent adverse events observed. Owners of four dogs reported seizures were their do while their dogs were on atopica. This is in this initial study. Uh, new cases of ear infections, allergic uh, ear inflammation, or redness of the ears developed while dogs were receiving atopica. Yeah, the thing that is supposed to be curing. Um, so out of the 265 dogs, 31% had vomiting. That's a lot. 20% had diarrhea. 7% had persistent ear infections. 4% developed urinary tract infections. 3% had uh, anorexia or lack of appetite. 2.5% uh, lethargy, 2.5% with a gingival hyperplasia, 2.5% with lymphadenopathy. Um, other uh, side effects reported included constipation, flatulence or gas, clostridial organisms in the feces, nausea, regurgitation, increased thirst and urination, strong urine odor, protein in the urine, itching, uh, redness or flushed appearance, skin infections, crusty uh, skin disease, excessive shedding, coarse coat, loss of hair, papillomas, histiocytoma tumors, uh, granulominous masses or lesions, epulis, which is a mouth tumor, uh, multiple hemangioma, seizures, shaking, trembling, hind limb twitch, panting, depression, irritability, hyperactivity, uh, increased light sensitivity, reluctance to go outside, weight loss, and hepatitis. I, you know, th I, this is like those commercials on TV may cause <laughs> in that little soft voice at the end and they talk really fast. Uh, so we've got somebody on here because I was on cyclosporin a lot as a kid and somebody said it helped their Sjogren's tremendously, which that's an autoimmune disease and that's what it's used for, but it can predispose you to kidney disease, cancer, all kinds of other things. Um, so as far as blood work goes out of those, um, 265 dogs that were in the initial trial, 8% had elevated creatinine, which is kidney function testing. Uh, six and a half percent had increased, uh, globulins, which is a protein that, uh, basically signals inflammation. 5% had increased phosphorus, three and a half percent increased protein levels, two and a half percent increased cholesterol. Uh, two and a half percent low albumin, which is made by the liver, two and a half percent low calcium, and two and a half percent elevated BUN, which is a measure of um, kidney function for the most part. Um, so they also in those dogs saw increased sodium, increased potassium, increased uh, liver values, ALT, ALKFOS, um, increased chloride and calcium. All right, so that was the original study to get the drug approved. So they had all these side effects, all these levels really high, and they got it approved. So this is the post-approval experience um, on the veterinary label. And remember, this is, this is what's been reported to the FDA. And remember only about 1%, and I didn't look up how many have been reported. I'm sure it's a lot. Uh, only about 1% actually get reported. So for gastrointestinal system, vomiting diarrhea, the gingival hyperplasia, hemorrhagic diarrhea, abdominal pain, vomiting blood, digestive tract hemorrhage, retching, gas, tenesmus, which is straining, uh, digestive tract hypermotility, uh, dark tarry stools, pancreatitis, involuntary defecation, love that. Um, general lethargy, anorexia, weight loss, increased thirst, uh, increased uh, fever, 
pale mucous membranes, general pain, collapse, dehydration, edema, uh, skin lesions, itching, dermatitis, eczema, hair loss, redness, papillomas, bacterial skin infections, um, skin and or appendage cancers, pigmentation disorders, hair change, hyperkeratosis, which is a, a thickening, um, excess keratin, which is like skin laid down, particularly on the paw pads, um, histiocytomas, fungal skin infections, dermal cysts, behavioral hyperactivity, behavioral changes, anxiety, vocalization, aggression, inappropriate urination, disorientation, neurologic, muscle tremor, seizures, uh, ataxia, which is a wobbly walk, and paresis, which is partial paralysis, respiratory uh, tachypnea, which is rapid, uh, shallow respirations, dyspnea, which is struggling to breathe, and coughing. Uh, for the urinary system, increased urination, um, urine abnormalities, including bloody urine, urinary tract infection, protein in the urine, sugar in the urine, decreased urine concentration, urinary incontinence, cystitis, renal failure, kidney failure, and kidney insufficiency. Um, in the immune system, they saw hives, anaphylaxis, and allergic uh, swelling. They, in the blood and lymphatic system, we've had reports of lymphadenopathy, anemia, hypoalbuminemia, which is the low protein, and leukopenia, which is a decreased white cell count. They say it doesn't affect the bone marrow, but yet we have reports of decreased red cell and white cell production. Elevated liver enzymes, hepatopathy, hepatomegaly, hepatitis, which is basically a big swollen, angry liver. Uh, lameness, limb weakness, and muscle inflammation. Um, ear infections, tachycardia, which is a racing heart, diabetes, and high blood sugar. And in some cases, death and euthanasia has been reported as an outcome of the adverse events listed above. No shock there. Cancer has been reported in dogs taking atopica, including reports of lymphoma, lymphosarcoma, and mast cell tumor. Um, diabetes mellitus has been reported. West Highland White Terriers are the most frequently reported breed, and West Highland White Terriers happen to be a breed that really loves to have environmental and food allergies. Um, it's an immunosuppressive agent that has been shown to work via suppression of the T helper and T suppressor cells and inhibition of interleukin-2. So those are, um, those are white blood cells, the lymphocytes that are the immune system. Um, it is extensively metabolized in the liver to a lesser degree in the gastrointestinal tract and the kidney. Um, <clears throat> here's what's really interesting. 74% of atopica treated dogs showed improvement in their itch scores over the first 30 day period. So 26% of the dogs, it didn't help. And we got all these side effects. I don't know how this thing got on. Um, in a 52 week oral study, uh, they gave different dose levels. They saw vomiting, diarrhea, weight loss in all levels of treatment. Uh, and the, uh, the side effects increased in frequency as they increased the dose. Papilloma wart-like lesions of the skin were observed in five out of eight animals between weeks 20 and 40. Um, other findings in, in this study included swollen gums due to chronic gingivitis and periodontitis, lower serum albumin, higher cholesterol and triglycerides, anemia, decreased white blood cell counts, lymphoid atrophy. So that's lymph, your lymph nodes. That's part of your immune system. So they just kind of shriveled up. Um, the maximum recommended dose when administered for 90 days causes callus-like lesions on the foot pads. That's that hyperkeratosis. Red, swollen ears, mild to moderate gingival proliferation. That's the um, gums. Hyperkeratotic areas on the skin. So you can get these plaques on the skin as well. Hair loss, salivation, vomiting, diarrhea, abnormal stools. Um, and then when they went to the higher doses, then we got... Uh, enlarged lymph no nodes and weight loss. Um, proliferation of the gingiva, gingiva, the gums, and the toe pad epithelium was seen in all atopic dosed groups. Um, okay, so let's talk about um, drug interactions with this. So uh, some drugs are going to increase the concentration of cyclosporin in the blood, in the body, in the bloodstream, and others are going to decrease the concentration and make it less effective. Um, so antibacterials that are going to decrease its effectiveness include clindamycin, sulfadiazine, and trimethoprim, which is a sulfa drug. So we got two sulfa drugs and clindamycin. So if you're, um, if you're a 
dog is on this drug and is put on antibiotics, you need to ask what you need to do. Uh, do you need to increase or de decrease one of the drugs? Um, antibiotic antibacterials that may increase cyclosporine concentration. This is a longer list. Azithromycin, chloramphenicol, those two are not used that often. Ciprofloxacin, that's used a lot. Clarithromycin, not used as much. Enrofloxacin, that's Batril, that is used a lot. Erythromycin, not used that much. Metronidazole. So let's see, your dog gets put on Atopica and then he gets diarrhea. So your vet turns around and puts him on metronidazole for the diarrhea. And now our cyclosporine concentration is being increased in the bloodstream, causing more side effects. And uh, let's see, antifungals, all the, the azoles, fluconazole, itraconazole, ketoconazole are, are all going to increase cyclosporine concentration. A lot of these dogs either have or will develop fungal infections and will be put on an antifungal drug. And so that's going to change your cyclosporine concentration. Um, decreasing cyclosporine concentration is terbinafine. That's not used very often. Um, all right, gastroprotectants. And so these are drugs and uh, gastroprokinetics. These are drugs that are used very commonly as well. Cisapride, omeprazole, cimetidine, which is tagamet, and metoclopramide, which is reglin, will increase cyclosporine concentration. Famotidine will decrease cyclosporine concentration. And other drugs that will increase it include calcium channel blockers. These are our heart dogs, digoxin, estrogens, and flavonoids in grapefruit juice. Not too many of our dogs drink grapefruit juice or eat grapefruit, but it is important for people who take this drug. Um, and drugs that may decrease the cyclosporine in concentration include azathioprine, which is another immunosuppressive, phenobarbital, which is an anticonvulsant, phenytoin, which is an anticonvulsant, and cyclophosphamid, which is a chemotherapeutic drug. So there are drug interactions, and you need to ask about those if your animal um, is taking this. So your dog is on it twice a day with food. Use the Atopica for cats due to his weight. Well, hopefully he's not under four pounds because it shouldn't be used in dogs under four pounds. Um, yes, it's the, the commercials for people with meds that say, don't take it for allergic to blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's, um, yeah. And it is used in kidney transplants to any organ transplant to suppress the immune system. Um, my, uh, well, Hugh's sister-in-law um, had a kidney transplant and was placed on all these immunosuppressants and within a year had cancer, which took her life. So pretty bad news. Um, yeah, this does sound horrible. So Atopica is not very, is not near as popular as it used to be because um, Apoquil came on board and they said, oh, well, good, Apoquil has a lot less side effects. Yeah, we talked about those the other day. We still got some serious side effects going on here, folks. Um, so if you're using this as an eye drop, yeah, your German Shepherd was on it for uh, perianal fistulas and ended up with lung cancer. Ugh. Sorry. Um, yeah, and the eye drop um, tends to be a little more localized. You're not gonna, it's a low dose. You're not absorbing as much, but I'm a much bigger fan of tacrolimus for a dry eye drop than I am for um, cyclosporin. I I got really away from this stuff. Um, all right, so there's somebody talking about uh, an herbal medicine site. I'm thinking that's a human um, for treating all kinds of different things. Yeah, I mean, if we, if we could be, what can be used for IBD? Fix the diet. I would never use these things for IBD. You got to fix the diet. You got to heal the gut. You got to do a leaky gut protocol. You got to do a fecal transplant, most likely. Um, you've got to feed a, a correct species appropriate diet. Um, there's really no reason for our animals to suffer with IBD uh, because that is something that is so repairable. And unfortunately, it's treated completely completely wrong in traditional medicine. They just give you a different dry prescription diet that's got horrible ingredients, a bunch of synthetics that the body reacts to, uh, high starch, uh, high carbohydrate foods, just terrible, absolutely terrible. Um, what are we supposed to use to help our pets with allergic reactions of unknown cause? Well, I would probably, again, I would, um, I would 
do a leaky gut protocol. I might uh, look at what the microbiome is doing. Um, I would put them on a really good soil-based probiotic like the Phytos Flora or the Symbiotic Canine. Um, and again, I would, I would fix the diet and that might mean that you have to do some elimination diet. You could do NutriScan to see what's going on. You can do um, allergy testing to see what they might be allergic to in the environment. But remember that everything that you're using in their environment can make them break out. So if you're using um, deodorizers in your house, if you use sprays, perfumes, carpet powders, carpet sprays, um, any of that kind of stuff can make our animals break out. Whatever you're using for cleaning your house can make them break out. Really, really important that we're not using things with artificial fragrances, artificial yeah, uh, you know, chemical based products. We've got to get back to, so you can use white dilute white vinegar for cleaning your floors, cleaning your cabinets. Um, you really want to use, um, oh geez, you just came from your vet, the person in front of you picking up four boxes of Brevecto. You cringed, but couldn't say any, I know it's so hard. It is really hard. Um, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> maybe Joyce says, Denise, maybe you need a t-shirt. <laughs> we could get, that's a good idea. Just wear it to the vet office. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe one of the Dr. Judy Morgan t-shirts, but I don't know. The vet might kick you out. Who knows? Um, all right. Your palm is having so many issues. He's dealing with pancreatitis and IBDs on budesonide and a small dose. Well, budesonide is better than the other ones, but I'd still be trying to get away from that um, because we do know that steroids can contribute to pancreatitis. Um, all right. Do, 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 do. I think I, I saw some other questions that went by. What about Cytopoint? That is tomorrow's discussion. Yay. I think so. Let me flip my thing over. Yep, that's tomorrow. <laughs> Hugely used for IMHA pups. I never used it for IMHA. IMHA is like, give them some, a blast of steroids to get it under control and then fix things. Um, I've just never had to use these things. Never had to use these things. Yeah, there you go. Many more problems than apical eye disorders, including blindness, blood and lymphatic disorders, immune system, neurologic, respiratory, immune mediated hemolytic anemia, immune mediated thrombocytopenia, seizures, convulsions, and ataxia. Yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, it's uh, really, really good stuff. Okay, uh, I'm going to get going. Uh, Amazon carries NAC eye drops, MSM eye drops, and a few other antioxidants. Perfect. Yeah, um, there's a, a lot of good, good products out there. All right. All right. Yeah, Cytopoint doesn't fix anything either. Uh, you use white vinegar and hydrogen peroxide for cleaning, which is great. No chemicals inside or outside. Perfect. Yeah, fecal transplants can be very, very helpful. Natural mucus thinner, phlegm draining foods, and NAC, um, and acetylcysteine. So your PEA was just delivered. Yay. Is, are there a list of any vets who listen and follow you? We actually have a do, do have a lot of vets um, who follow our page, which is amazing. But uh, if you're looking for a holistic vet, a good starting place is ahvma.org. Um, oh, come on. It would help if I was actually typing when I was typing. ahvma.org. They have a vet finder. That's the um, Holistic Veterinary Medical Association. Um, and uh, the problem is anybody can join and they're not all holistic. So you, you still have to do your homework to see if there's somebody you like or not.